Chapter 6 One day the group of prophets came to Elisha and told him, As you can see, this place where we meet with you is too small. Let's go down to the Jordan River, where there are plenty of logs. There we can build a new place for us to meet. All right, he told them. Go ahead. Please come with us, someone suggested. I will, he said. When they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees, but as one of them was chopping, his axe head fell into the river. Ah, my lord, he cried. It was a borrowed axe. Where did it fall? The man of God asked. When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it into the water. Then the axe head rose to the surface and floated. Grab it, Elisha said to him, and the man reached out and grabbed it. When the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he would confer with his officers and say, We will mobilize our forces at such and such a place. But immediately Elisha, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, Do not go near that place. For the Arameans are planning to mobilize their troops there. So the king of Israel would send word to the place indicated by the man of God, warning the people there to be on their guard. This happened several times. The king of Aram became very upset over this. He called in his officers and demanded, Which of you is the traitor? Who has been informing the king of Israel of my plans? It's not us, my lord, one of the officers replied. Elisha, the prophet in Israel, tells the king of Israel even the words you speak in the privacy of your bedroom. The king commanded, Go and find out where Elisha is, and we will send troops to seize him. And the report came back. Elisha is at Dothan. So one night the king of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses to surround the city. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Ah, my lord, what will we do now? He cried out to Elisha. Don't be afraid, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed, O lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened his servant's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. As the Aramean army advanced toward them, Elisha prayed, O Lord, please make them blind. And the Lord did as Elisha asked. Then Elisha went out and told them, You have come the wrong way. This isn't the right city. Follow me, and I will take you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to Samaria. As soon as they had entered Samaria, Elisha prayed, O Lord, Now open their eyes and let them see. And the Lord did, and they discovered that they were in Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he shouted to Elisha, My father, should I kill them? Of course not, Elisha told him. Do we kill prisoners of war, give them food and drink, and send them home again to their master? So the king made a great feast for them, and then sent them home to their king. After that, the Aramean raiders stayed away from the land of Israel. Sometime later, however, King Ben-Hadad of Aram mobilized his entire army and besieged Samaria. As a result, there was a famine in the city. After a while, even a donkey's head sold for two pounds of silver, and a cup of dove's dung cost about two ounces of silver. One day, as the king of Israel was walking along the wall of the city, a woman called to him, Please help me, my lord the king. If the lord doesn't help you, what can I do? He retorted, I have neither food nor wine to give you. But then the king asked, What is the matter? She replied, This woman proposed that we eat my son one day and her son the next. So we cooked my son and ate him. Then the next day I said, Kill your son so we can eat him. But she had hidden him. When the king heard this, he tore his clothes in despair. And as the king walked along the wall, the people could see that he was wearing sackcloth underneath next to his skin. May God kill me if I don't execute Elisha, son of Shaphat, this very day. The king vowed. Elisha was sitting in his house at a meeting with the leaders of Israel when the king sent a messenger to summon him. But before the messenger arrived, Elisha said to the leaders, A murderer has sent a man to kill me. When he arrives, 
Shut the door and keep him out. His master will soon follow him. When Elisha was still saying this, the messenger arrived, and the king said, It is the Lord who has brought this trouble on us. Why should I wait any longer for the Lord? 